immediately after surgery, what do you recommend your patients do to start the whole recovery process? I mean, I'm a, a huge proponent on early mobilization. Getting home, I'm, I'm getting up and down. I'm doing the physical therapy exercises that I'm sent home with. And I'm doing those, yeah, early mobilization. We get our patients up walking quickly after surgery, and we expect them to continue that mobilization through their early healing process. Now, I imagine that there are some patients that are thinking, I just had surgery. You really want me to walk right now? How do you communicate that to them before surgery so they are in the know and understand the importance of that? Part of what I do is managing expectations. And so uh, if you don't have this discussion prior to surgery, then then a lot of the the standard or the status quo that's kind of been out there for years in this idea that, hey, my my older siblings or my parents had surgery and this is kind of what they did. They just took it easy for two weeks. That can actually be detrimental. So I have this discussion with patients leading up to it and I, and I, I help their expectations match my expectations. And that being that they understand that early mobilization is very important. Um, and then they also know that this is possible for them to have a major surgery. It's still considered a major surgery, but the effects of it um, as far as, causing um, or being significantly debilitating for them and requiring them to basically be, be immobile is, no, is not uh, really an appropriate expectation to have. And so how soon do you have them starting physical therapy, whether that's at home or in an outpatient clinic? I tell them they can take a day off and then they have to start physical therapy tomorrow. And that's typically home exercises first. And then I don't get them into formal physical therapy uh, depending on the joint, it, it varies. But as far as knees are concerned, I typically allow them uh, to, uh, to get into formal physical therapy within the week. And it's usually about three to five days. Okay. So is it necessary that they attend physical therapy or are these exercises things that they technically could do on their own? I'll be honest, from a knee standpoint, I would tell most everyone that yes, I, I, I highly recommend, if not insist, you do physical therapy. However, that being said, I have had some individuals that do not have access to physical therapy. For example, they live in rural, um, rural America, rural Arizona for that matter. Um, but we have a lot of people that travel from different parts of the country to come um, and have their surgery done here. But um, if you don't have access, then we are very uh, open and honest about what types of exercises you'll need to do to do this on your own. And I've had some real interesting and not surprising success because if they, if they follow our direction, then they can do it. But, but realistically it's best, I think initially for you to have the, the help and care of the therapy providers, because they do provide such a, uh, an added benefit uh, to your recovery process after the, this type of surgery. Okay. So it sounds like if you may not have access and the worst comes the worst that you have to do the exercise at home, being diligent to kind of the instructions that you provide can certainly still ensure that you recover. I even try to exclude the therapist. I don't want anybody to go into this thinking that my therapist has to get me where I need to be. Mm -hmm. It's the patient's job to, to, to get them to where they need to be. And that is through their own physical therapy at home and a provider directed physical therapy through the therapist that they, they visit. And if they end up doing it on their own, which again, I is rare in the knee circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, if they end up doing it on their own, that they know that this is basically their job. <laughs>